Hey everyone, welcome back to DSP Lectures. We have introduced ourselves to discrete time system in the last video and we also learned about the basic building blocks of a discrete time system. In this video, we will continue our discussion on discrete time systems and learn about the classification of discrete time systems based on the general properties that they satisfy. The main classifications are based on the following properties. Linearity stability, invertibility, time invariance, memory, and causality. Of these, linearity, stability, and invertibility are called amplitude properties, and time invariance, memory, and causality are called time properties. You will find out the reason why they are called so when we study them in detail. In this lecture, we will focus on linearity in detail, and we'll study the rest of the properties in the coming lectures. So, let's get started. First, we will study about linear systems. A linear system is a system that satisfies the superposition principle. This is the only necessary and sufficient condition to see if a system is linear. Any system which does not follow the superposition principle is called a nonlinear system. So, what is superposition principle? The principle of superposition is a combination of two different laws law of additivity and law of homogeneity. Let us study about law of additivity first. For that, consider a discrete time system. When the input to the system is x1 of n, the output to the system is y1 of n. That is, y1 of n is the output obtained from this particular system when the input to it is x1 of n. Now, we will change the input. For the same discrete time system, instead of x1 of n, we will give an input x2 of n. The corresponding output will be y2 of n. Now, we will add the outputs y1 of n and y2 of n. Thus, we have y1 of n plus y2 of n. Okay, this can be considered as the first step in checking the law of additivity. So, step 1. Coming to step 2, instead of adding the outputs, we will first add the inputs x1 of n and x2 of n like this. The resultant sum is x1 of n plus x2 of n. This is then fed to the same system as input. Let the output generated by the system be y dash n. So, this is step 2. Now, there are two possibilities for y dash n. The first possibility is that y dash n is equal to y1 of n plus y2 of n. Now, a system is said to follow the law of additivity only in the first case. That is, when y dash n is equal to y1 of n plus y2 of n, we say that the system is obeying the law of additivity. Obeys the law of additivity. In the second case, when the outputs are not the same, the system does not follow the law of additivity. I hope everyone understood the law of additivity and how to check it. First, we will provide two different inputs to the system and we find the corresponding outputs. These outputs are then added to get the final result. Next, we will add the inputs first and the resultant sum is given as an input to the system. The corresponding output is y dash n. If y dash n is equal to y1 of n plus y2 of n, then the system is said to follow the law of additivity. An important point to note here is that we keep the system same in all these cases. Okay, now let's see the second law in the superposition principle, that is law of homogeneity. To check the principle of homogeneity also, we have two steps. In the first step, we take the same system as before and give an input x of n to it. The corresponding output is y of n. 
Now we will multiply the output with a constant k to get k into y of n. So this is step 1. Step 1. In the next step, instead of output y of n, we will multiply the input x of n with a constant k to get k into x of n. Then this k into x of n is fed to the same system as input. And let the output be y dash n. And this is step 2. Step 2. Just like in the first case, here also there are two possibilities for y dash n. y dash n can either be equal to k into y of n or not equal to k into y of n. The system is said to follow the law of homogeneity only when y dash n is equal to k into y of n. So in this case, the system obeys the law of homogeneity. Obeys the law of homogeneity. In the second case, it does not obey the homogeneity principle. So I hope now you understand what is law of homogeneity and law of additivity. If a system follows both these laws, then the system is said to satisfy the superposition principle and the system is therefore linear. Now, to show that a system is non-linear, all you have to show is that it fails at least one of these laws. That is, if a system does not follow the law of homogeneity, there is no need to check the law of additivity because the system is going to be non-linear as it has already violated the superposition principle. Ok, now let us take an example to familiarize the concepts we have learned so far. Consider a system described by y of n equal to a into x of n plus b. Our task is to check the linearity of the system. For this, first let us check the law of additivity. So, let us give an input x1 of n to the system. Based on the system difference equation, we know that the system will first scale the input x of n with a scalar a and then add a scalar b to it. So, the corresponding output for the input x1 of n will be y1 of n equal to a into x1 of n plus b. Similarly, for another input x2 of n, the system output will be y2 of n equal to a into x2 of n plus b. Now we will add y1 of n and y2 of n. Therefore, we have y1 of n plus y2 of n equal to a into x1 of n plus b plus a into x2 of n plus b and this is equal to a into x1 of n plus x2 of n plus 2b. Coming to the second step in the law of additivity, we will add the inputs x1 and x2 together. So we have input x1 of n plus x2 of n. This combination is then given as an input to the system. Like I said before, the system will first scale the system input with scalar a. So we have a into x1 of n plus x2 of n. Now the system will add a scalar b to it. So this is the system output y dash n for the input x1 of n plus x2 of n. As you can see y dash n is not equal to y1 of n plus y2 of n. So the system does not follow the law of additivity. This means that it has already violated the law of superposition. So without even checking the law of homogeneity we can conclude that the system is non-linear. Non-linear system. Now let us see one more example on the same topic. Consider the system described by y of n equal to x of cos of n. 
Proceeding like before, first we will check the law of additivity. For input x1 of n, the corresponding output will be y1 of n equal to x1 of cos of n. Similarly, for input x2 of n, the corresponding output will be y2 of n equal to x2 of cos of n. Adding the outputs y1 of n and y2 of n together, we have y1 of n plus y2 of n equal to x1 of cos of n plus x2 of cos n. Now, coming to the second step in law of additivity, we will add the inputs x1 of n and x2 of n together and give this combination as an input to the system. As you can see from the difference equation, the transformation done by the system is to replace n with cos n. That is, x of n is the input to the system and the output is y of n equal to x of cos of n. If you compare x of n with x of cos n, you can see that in place of n, we have cos of n. Therefore, coming to our inputs of x1 of n and x2 of n, in place of n, we will be having cos n. So, output y dash n is x1 of cos n plus x2 of cos n. Now, if you compare y dash n with y1 of n plus y2 of n, you can see that they are equal. Hence, the system satisfies the law of additivity. Let us now check the law of homogeneity. Law of homogeneity. So, let us multiply the output of the system with constant k. y of n is the output of the system and this is equal to x of cos n. Multiplying k with the output we get k into y of n equal to k into x of cos n. Now in step 2, we will multiply the input x of n with k. So we have k into x of n. This is then fed to the system. We already know the functionality of the system. It replaces n in x of n with cos n. So our output will be y dash n equal to k into x of cos n. If you see, these two results are the same. That is, y dash n is equal to k into y of n. So, the system obeys the law of homogeneity. Now that the system obeys both the laws of additivity and homogeneity, we can say that the system satisfies the superposition principle. Therefore, this is a linear system. Linear system. Okay, that's all for this lecture. To conclude, first we saw the main properties on which a discrete time system is classified. Then we learned about a linear system in detail and the necessary and sufficient condition for linearity. In the next lecture, we will learn about the next classification stable and unstable systems. I hope that all the concepts that were taught in this video are clear to all of you. If you have any doubt, feel free to ask them in the comments. Either we or some other viewer will surely help you. Also, if you found the lecture useful, please like the video and support us by subscribing to the channel. Thank you for watching Topperly and have a great day.